And welcome back to the Constitution line by line. We are uh, making our way through all these uh, things that Congress can and can't do. And we're spending a lot of time talking about economic things because of Congress's power of the purse strings. That's right. And and also uh the framers of the Constitution concern about the Articles of Confederation, which they're replacing with this Constitution. And their colonial experience. And their colonial experience. So they had real issues that they wanted to make sure were handled. Yeah, and they're handling them. And they're handling them. All right, so Paul Fabrizio will take this from a political science angle. I'll take it from a historical angle. Right now we're leaning heavily on his expertise. Clause 7, this is Article 1, Section 9, Clause 7, has to do with appropriations and claims. Yep. All right, so here's how it reads. No money shall be drawn from the Treasury, but in consequence of appropriations made by law and a regular statement and account of the receipts and expenditures of all public money (laughs) shall be published from time to time. So you can't just go hit the kitty. No, no, no. you got to be public about where you're spending the money. And there needs to be a legal mechanism called a law that says that you can go in and hit the kitty, but only if you provide receipts. That's exactly This sounds like filling out an expense (laughs) report after I take students to Austin. Yes, it does. And you wonder why this is in the Constitution. You wonder if there were issues with the Articles of Confederation or the Continental Congress regarding... Or human nature. Or human nature, <laughs> people with their hand in the till. Yeah. And so was there any? I'm just curious. You forget what? You forget about whose money it is. It yeah. Essence. And this is a statement that says, look, this is the public trust. Right. And so there has to be an accounting. There has do, to be an accounting. Do you recall any issues specifically where there was people who were taking money from the, the government till... Without, was there any scandals or anything like that? You know, that? I'm, I'm uh, not bringing any to mind. I'm not either. But I've often said that, you know, you often have to have good accountants. Mm-hmm. And this is kind of a good accountants right. clause. Yeah. And it drives entrepreneurs crazy when they have to account right. for all the funds that are being spent because they get spent in so many different ways and so many sort of fluid ways. Right. Uh, but you can't just be a freelancer right. in the federal government. Right. Somebody is going to call right. you to task. The government is going to say what it can spend, and then it's going to provide details about that spending. Yeah. And if you ever pull up a government budget document, it can be incredibly confusing. But in the end, it shows how much comes in how much goes out, and what it's going out for. And who did it. And who did it. Unless it's black ops. (laughs) Yeah, and see, that's one of the things that comes up is we have secret parts of the budget. It wasn't until a couple years ago that we knew, for example, how much was spent on national security Hmm. for our intelligence agencies. Sure. And now it's estimated, I believe the last number I saw was like $70 billion. But that was a number that just sort of disappeared. Let's say there's a congressional appropriation for military engineering mm-hmm. equipment. But it turns out the engineers don't need to spend all that money. Okay. Can you shift that money to something else Ooh. like, I don't know, like a border wall or something? <laughs> okay. What Don is bringing up here. <laughs> what I'm baiting you subtle with. way to do this <laughs> is he's bringing up the president – that President Trump uh, recently issued said there was a national emergency regarding our border wall, and our since, border in general. Our that border a wall in general, will fall. Yeah, and he wants to fund the border wall, and Congress simply refuses to do it. Yeah, and so therefore he, in declaring a national emergency, is saying, "I have the power to move money around." Congress appropriated the money for this thing, but I am going to take that money and move it to this area, and. Does the president have the right to do that? <laughs> My reading of the Constitution says no, he does not. But as commander of chief, would commander in chief, which we'll learn about later, right? Maybe if you declare a national emergency, this falls within his powers. Well, when we read the Constitution, I want you to find where it says the president has national emergency powers. Yeah, but um, dictatorial powers. <laughs> let Let's just go with what you just read there. Yeah, what you read was very simple. That. Congress 
appropriates the money. It's Congress who decides where the money is to be spent. It's not the president. The president, by law, is required by early February to propose a budget. Yeah. And the budget document, if you ever look at it, I mean, it's available online if you want to get the, the, the actual printed out document. I have seen eight feet tall National Bi budgets? National budgets. I mean, wow. just paper with our huge national government and the $4 trillion that we spend all laid out where it's all going to go. And so that is the president saying, this is where I want to spend it, goes to Congress. And frequently, Congress takes the budget and goes, thank you very much, Mr. President. Your budget is DOA, dead on arrival. Yep. And then they go through the appropriations and authorization process to hopefully at the end of the fiscal year, in anticipation of the next fiscal year, say, here, this is what you're actually going to spend. And where you're going to spend it. And then, of course, in our checks and balances system, the president has to sign off on that. So, president authorizes it, then they go and spend it, per what Congress says, based on what the president proposes. President proposes, Congress disposes. And it all comes to that little section of the Constitution. Congress appropriates the money. So, are we operating under a budget now? Yes, we are. Okay. Yes, Congress did approve a budget. Uh, they approved it after the government shut down in January. So this is one of those things that doesn't make for a sexy headline. No. This has nothing to do with Russian collusion. No. This has nothing to do with, you know, two-headed snake found in no. Tanzania. This is boring men in This is the nuts and suits. bolts. This is the nuts men and, and women in suits. Government. Yeah. Um, for, Doing boring stuff. When, when I was in graduate school, um, I was working with a professor there, uh, Tom Walker, and he was a specialist on the Supreme Court. And one of the things he had me do was read the budget for the Supreme Court. Oh, man. And it's like, whoever pays attention to the budget for the Supreme Court? But there it was all broken down in terms of salaries for the justices, the yeah. clerks, the janitors, that sort of stuff. And then lo and behold, there was an issue with rats in the basement of the Supreme Court building. So how much is going to go to rat the traps. Rats, <laughs> rat traps and what a service it was? And, of course, the roof on the Supreme Court building leaks, and that needed to be fixed. And you read it, and this— This sounds like a household budget exactly. or, or a company budget. Exactly. It's the nuts and bolts of government. And then I once had the joy of watching a congressional hearing on the Supreme Court budget and two of the justices, Clarence Thomas and Stephen Breyer, came and they testified about the budget of the Supreme Court. And they were talking again about the roof of the Supreme Court and it's leaking. It's leaking in my office. Yeah. Or I was so, eating a piece of pizza well, and Subway well, rat carried away my Well, it turns out pizza. the top of the Supreme Court, there's a basketball court called the highest court in the land. Uh. And it was leaking into that. So anyway, they needed to fix it. And Before so, the next pickup they, game, yeah, exactly. and somebody slipped. Yeah, exactly. So what do you do? You, <laughs> you, you. Here they are, the Supreme Court. They go to Congress and they ask for the money. They say, "Hey, can we, we fix the, the roof?" Yeah, and you know the president had already proposed this because they had already gone to the president with the proposal. The president sent it over to Congress. Congress said, "Okay, let's hear from the Supreme Court." So the two justices walked across the street to the Capitol building and testified in this little hearing. You know, and this <laughs> You just is, rarely think of that sort of stuff going you, you on. You rarely do, but this is the government. Um, think back to President Trump's first year in the White House. Mm -hmm. In the summer, he went off on vacation to Bedminster, New Jersey. Yeah. And what happened at the White House? They stripped it down real quickly, moved everything out, and did a ton of basic repairs. Plumbing, electricity, yeah. that sort of stuff. Again the nuts and bolts of government. You got to do it. It's got to be paid for. And it Congress has to be appropriated by law. It has to be appropriated. And there has to be receipts. Exactly. You can't Congress just dip into the till. Right. Which then raises the constitutional question of does the president have the emergency power to take money that Congress appropriated for one thing and move it to someplace else? Correct. And my reading of the Constitution says he doesn't. But I'm not a justice of the Supreme Court or a judge. Yet. 
I won't There's be. There's always a chance. No, no, there isn't. <laughs> All right. <laughs> anyway, so. and if there is, I'll come back here and tell you about it. Yeah, that'd be cool. That'd make a good episode. <laughs> um, anything else to say about appropriations and claims? No, it's it's this is this is I I love it because this is government. You get excited space. about this stuff. Yeah, yeah. This is what this is what you do. <laughs> this is the sounds <laughs> of the cogs and the gears. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right, so that's our line. There it is. And we've got an interesting line coming up. Oh, no, I can't wait to see. Oh, this is going to be a good one, so you'll have to come back in for the next episode of the Constitution line-by-line. Thanks.